Okay, today I'm in London with Roland de Wolf. Roland, thanks very much for agreeing to talk to us and giving us your time. I think for people that don't know who you are, um, we'd better ask you what you do for a living. Um, what do I do for a living? Uh, I don't think I do anything for a living these days. I um, try to enjoy myself uh, and have fun. Um, I wouldn't say I have a, an active income as such, but um, I'm fortunate enough to be able to, um, pers you know, to uh, follow my hobbies. So I wouldn't say I do anything for a living. Okay, so your hobbies being gambling. Well, no, that's one of my hobbies um, for sure. Um, and I have others, sport, politics, uh, wellness, um, animals. So, you know, I, 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 it's not that well-rounded. Travel, I guess. Um, but uh, I'm lucky enough to be able to wake up in the morning and say, you know, what, what do you want to do today? You can do whatever you want, Roland. Um, both me, not me and bloke in bed with another bloke called Roland. <laughs> so you, I mean, you're being, you're playing it down a bit here because you're a legendary character in terms of some of the big bets you've had. That's what I've been told anyway. Um, lots of big punters are quite secretive and most of my viewers, and indeed me, I wouldn't even know who they are. Um, why, are you, why have you agreed? We've been after you for five years. Why have you agreed to uh, do this and get a bit of publicity? You've always been quite secretive. Well, it's not so much secretive. It's just like people, people think like gambling is quite a private activity. Uh, you don't really want people knowing the ins and outs and how much you're swinging and, and all of that stuff because um, they'll judge you on it. And, um, you know, in a, in, as well, in a time as well where... You know, some people are really struggling for money, other people have got loads, you just don't want to be talking about it. And then there's people who have got an edge, they don't want to be, you know, telling about that. People who are gambling without an edge, um, people who are firing off, they also don't want to be, you know, there's no, there's no part of punters who, you know, uh, except for, you know, Floyd Mayweather might put up a few slips or Drake, but generally it's seen as something that's like your own business. Okay, so we won't talk figures, but in terms of the UK's biggest punters, where would you put yourself? Top five, ten percent? Look, I know that um, I know that I obviously will find other people who of my size who will gamble the same. So to me, there's a lot of people who are sort of betting at that. That, but I obviously understand also that most people don't have that sort of uh, bankroll or situation to allow them to do that or wouldn't want to. So obviously, the vast majority of people aren't betting. Um, in the sizes that I bet, it's also that over the years you just get accustomed to going bigger and you know whatever you need to get your buzz or, or, or whatever, and then you encounter people at those stakes. So from the people I encounter, yeah, a lot, there are a lot of people who are betting that, but obviously the vast, vast majority are not. Okay, so you said that um, one of your hobbies is sports and politics. Would I be right in thinking you bet heavily on both of those? Yeah, I mean sport. Um, I love sport um, and I do bet on it and um, whatever Ben Keith will, will, will think, I've lost a lot over the years betting sport. Like I've got, I've just like a bet for account that's been like everywhere basically. Um, I, I, I've fired off on sport. Like my own opinion is worth less than nothing, like less than nothing. Like I wouldn't win if there was no juice. But what I have managed to do is get some like good info down the years that has kind of turned and negate some of those losses. I know I'm going a little bit off the question. Yeah, yeah, I like sport. <laughs> but, right, so can you tell us then, I know you said you didn't want to talk figures, but people love to know about it. So what would have been, what would be like a, a big win for you on a sports bet? What sort of figure? I don't know. I remember when uh, Obama won the first time, it was the second time, and I had like, you know, and I won off that like several hundred K. That was like a big win. Uh, I think he was a favourite, but that was huge. Um, however... I don't even think I won that day. Like it's it's all part because it's all it's all part of a big big swings. You know, sometimes you'll win here, sometimes you'll win there. Uh, I'm being an all round. I'm a bit of an all rounder when it comes to gambling. Like I like casinos, or at least I go to them. Uh, uh, sports betting, I'll punt on you know anything that's going on. Prop bets, poker, financials, politics. But because I'm like involved in all of it, uh, you know. Um, they're, 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 they're sort of sometimes they offset a bit of each other or, you know, and I don't need like huge, huge action. Um, I need a lot of constant action, but I don't need to be like 
bet, I, you know, if I randomly bet on a something, I don't need to have 100K to, to get an interest in it. Um, so, um, yeah, I, don't, I didn't really answer your question. No, you, 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 you did. You took several hundred thousand, so that gives us a rough idea about the sort of size. Oh, uh, yeah, but I mean, like, like back and forth betting, you know, like 10, 20K is normal to swing, you know, 50s isn't a big swing, even hundreds, but, you know. Um, right, should we go to your, right, so where you are now? You're a big punter, you're a big player. Uh, what's your background? I mean, where did the, first of all, you know, what were you sort of brought up in the gambling industry? I had an uncle who was a big gambler. He always was always at the casino. And uh, he had a very well-known acting agency called Felix de Wolf, and they, they still exist in uh, Soho. And um, he was a, a big gambler. And it was something that from a very young age, like me and my mates, we were always like uh, gambling on the back of the bus at school. Like I remember there was three of us and one guy ended up being a gold trader Another guy was a um, work, ended up working for one of the bookmakers, and then I went into gambling as well. So we were all like from that age, and I just loved it. Even I remember all my mates saying when I was like 12, 13, 14 years old, you can't play anything without it being without having a bet on it. Like pool, um, we used to play uh, crazy golf in the park. We were bunking off lessons all the time to play pool, like you know, just fivers and whatever. Um, anything that you can bet on, basically. We, I didn't really understand like how sports betting worked, but we we're always punting amongst ourselves. So it was always kind of in the blood. Um, I had quite bad OCD when I was younger and I found that gambling really helped me uh, at least distract me from that. And it was just something that was just always, you know, everyone, I mean, everyone who has a gambling path has stories like that, but like student loan in the casino when I was at university, done that in one night, uh, emergency loan night two, um, you know, w I remember winning two grand when I was like 18 years old, and coming back from the casino, like throwing up against the car, like cash, like in this like little Ford Fiesta, driving back from Luton with like the cash on the dashboard, like so happy, even though I'd probably lost like double that in the previous like few months. Like there was all these, like I can remember even like, you know, what numbers I, I hit on roulette on those particular nights, like going back, I don't know, 20 years. So uh, it was always there. Um, and it just became something that I found it difficult to do without. <laughs> okay, now one of the things that you have been in the spotlight for, there's loads of videos of you out there, is poker. Now, you, as far as I understand, you went from writing about poker in Inside Edge magazine back in the early 2000s, um, and then winning millions playing it. Where did the jump come from? Oh, you've done your research, huh? Well, I used to write for Inside Edge. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You haven't done your research. You were there, so I didn't recognise. Mm. Um, did you used to have a, like a caricature in the magazine? We used to do like little caricatures above people's. Uh, I'm not sure now. I'll have to go and yeah. check. Um, James Hitwell yes, and Co. Um, what was the jump from writing to playing poker? Yeah, I mean, well, I've got that wrong. Were you already a, a, an established? No, I wasn't. Player? No, I, I went in and you know, I remember I must have been a, about six months before I started working for. Uh, Inside Edge, which was my first job, I did a, um, a, a charity poker night and I barely had played a bit of Hold'em. I'd seen like late night poker on TV and like Al Alvarez was there and uh, Sir Clive Sinclair playing this tournament and I ended up winning it and the prize was like a night at the hotel where the tournament was played. It was all really cool and I just loved the game. Like, I loved poker then, like X so many times more than like, what, I like, what I think about it now. Like it was so fun in those days, even like going down the bit, watching that night poker, all of that, like Texas Hold'em at the beginning. And I just loved it. I just loved playing. Um, I'd play at my lunch break at, when I, Dennis Publishing. It was playing at nights in the week at Gut Shot and just like absorbing all of that, like wanting to be better, reading. And then I would like go and interview people because I was working for a magazine like Doyle Brunson or, you know, Eric Lindgren or, you know, just all, everyone, Ivy. You know, people who eventually I'd be playing against and gambling against, but that was how it started. And uh, a lot of it, uh, the jump was, you know, obviously I thought I could do this, but there was a lot of like right place, right time. I was never the best player by any means. Uh, I kind of knew, I was good at tournaments, like I kind of knew how to, how, but you need so much luck. And it, but, but that just became a natural thing for me. Like, why would you want to go and get up at eight in the morning, work all day for fuck all, 
when you can, you know, <laughs> yeah. gamble all day. No, is, is poker around. something that you can teach yourself to be that good at if you read all the books going? I mean, uh, you, okay, so, yeah, so, on, sorry. so you, I, I, I interrupted your question because are you asking about can you do that now or can you, could you well, do I mean, that then? It, 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 because it, you're talking about like... Have you got, do you need to have an aptitude for it to be that bit at the top or can you teach yourself you can teach yourself to get good enough i mean if you these days like it's so much different it's so hard like, even the the bad players are better than the best players used to be so it's it's a completely different game but um you can teach yourself to get pretty far or there's enough stuff online obviously to to uh to do it but these days like a i'm a dinosaur i'm like bjorn borg with a wooden racket like turning up to play against Federer and nadal like it's a joke so i obviously couldn't play against any of the top players and hold my own um, but, uh, you know, if I play against people who like, don't know what beats what, then, you know, I'm probably 60, 40 favorite. <laughs> okay. Look, I've been lucky enough to be speak to either friends of yours or friends of friends and to a man, they've all said you can read people's minds when you're playing, you, you've got a talent for spotting when somebody's bluffing, when somebody's not, for, you know, yeah, is that, I, mean, I think what, what they'd say as a, as a poker player is he doesn't have good technical skills, <laughs> but he's Henry. Can you get Hemi on the camera? Um, so yeah, you've got good technical skills, but um, but what we don't have is, uh, sorry, we don't have good technical skills, but we do have good reading skills. So yes, uh, I'm quite good at seeing if people are lying, what they're doing under pressure, all of that stuff. Yeah, it's, e it's easy to lie to someone if as I say, if you're under pressure, it's not, not so easy to lie to someone. If I told, say, what's your name in the street and you said it's Jessica, I probably would think it's not, you're wrong. But if you said it's Steve, I'm not gonna know that your name's Simon. If I'm interviewing you under a pressure situation, you've got to lie to me, it might be a, a bit different. So in terms of the reading people side of things, I always thought I was pretty good. Um, but that's massively overrated in poker. That's what they don't tell you. And were you good at hiding your what you were up to? Because I saw a, a Ben sent me a, pic, a video of you bluffing somebody. You totally, you know, you, you totally flummoxed him. Uh, I was quite relaxed, but, um, you know, uh, I guess not caring that much always was part of it because because you're uh, if you're like a bit of a um, an all-round gambler then you probably have action on X Y and Z and just the poker is just one part of it and you're not going to be like too hit up or like worried about the money like and it's a bit of a cliche like don't care about money um, you know but most people care, care a bit more than me was poker where you got your initial lump to make you able to get sort of step it up a bit uh yes yeah um poker was kind to me good to me and uh did did well from in those days